Hi, my name is David Cardella, and I'm a product manager with our developer technologies. And I'm here today to answer a number of questions uh, that you've sent in regarding our developer tooling. So let's get to it. The first question comes from Jamal. How long does it take to learn to be a developer? I've worked with GIS, but never with development tools. Jamal, this is an excellent question, and it actually can be a little difficult to answer because there's many variables involved. Of course, your previous experience in development, how quickly you pick up technology, and also whether your current job allows you the time to learn new technologies and learn new development languages. Luckily, we have a set of development tools for both the experienced developer, the novice developer, uh, as well as uh, the non-developer. Uh, for the most experienced developers or the most powerful tooling, we've got um, web APIs and we've got native runtime SDKs. We also have fantastic documentation, everything from uh, API help to terrific samples. We also have a very vibrant developer community on GitHub and GeoNet. In addition to that, for our uh, developers and non-developers alike, we have configurable apps either configuring the apps that we provide for you, like a dashboard or collector, or perhaps taking one of our native or web app builders, where you can use templates, as well as uh, build your app using components in a WYSIWYG environment, a what you see is what you get configuration environment. So you can see that whether you're an experienced developer or a novice developer, um, or just learning, uh, we have a lot of tooling uh, that can help you be productive really quickly. Our next question comes from Daniel. In this rapidly changing world of developers, how can I get assistance in building mobile apps without spending a fortune? Daniel, really good question. We're currently building a curriculum that's going to allow you to develop, configure, build your own custom apps. And we're going to deliver this training to you through a couple of ways. An online instructor-led course, that prevents you from having to go to the actual location to get your training, but also a web course, which you can take at your own pace. In addition, we have a MOOC that, al that allows you to learn how to build, configure uh, your own custom apps, but also extend our platform. Another great source of developer training is the recordings that we have for our developer summit that we hold every year in Palm Springs. Our next question comes from Hamid. There seems to be so many ways to develop against the ArcGIS platform, it's confusing. Can you clearly articulate my options? So Hamid, generally there are two ways that you can go about this. You can either extend our platform or you can build your own apps that are integrated or use our platform. Extending our platform involves extending our desktop tools like desktop and pro, either by building add-ins or extensions or automation tools. You can also extend our server software by building SOIs, server object interceptors, as well as SOEs, server object extensions. On the app development side of the shop, you have an array of web APIs as well as native SDKs that you can choose from in order to build your apps that use or sit on top of our platform. In the native world, we support uh, all of the popular uh, uh, languages, uh, .NET, uh, iOS, Android, Qt, and Java. Our next question comes from Julie, and she asks, Recently I've heard the name Quartz in relation to runtime. What does Quartz refer to? Is it a new product? Julie, Quartz is the project name that we're giving to our next generation native developer technology. So it represents a, a group of significant new capabilities that we're going to be releasing over the next uh, couple of years. Every major release will have its own uh, name or project name. So really, when you hear the word Quartz, we're just referring to the next major release of, in this case, our native developer technology. And you'll hear me refer to Quartz uh, throughout this uh, question and answer session. These next two questions come from Adam. Do you plan to fully leverage the GPU in all vector and raster local server analysis? If so, what are the time frames? So Adam, in order to fully answer this question, I need to talk a little bit about the runtime architecture. 
at its core, we have uh, what we call the C++ runtime core. As the name suggests, it's built in C++, and that's where all of our capability is implemented. Um, once we've done that, we compile the C++ core and all the platforms uh, that we support, and then we expose that capability to developers through, um, through APIs. Now, we will be um, implementing a GPU compute framework at the C++ core level. What this is going to allow us to do is to do some very intense processing using the GPU of the device that the app is running on rather than the CPU. You may have seen some examples of this already. Uh, we've shown some uh, samples and some tech previews on both iOS and Android where on the fly we've generated some visual analysis like line of sight as well as view shed. You can expect this type of visual analysis being run on the GPU to be released uh, in Quartz in the coming months. In Adam's second question, he asks, what is Esri doing to make local raster access and processing easier? Also as part of the Quartz release, we are implementing the capability to allow you to directly access files, both raster and vector. Some examples of these are KML, shapefile, DTED, JPEG, and PNG. What this is going to allow you to do is you're not going to be required to either pre-process or pre-package your data for your runtime apps or author this data within a map. You'll just have the, um, the luxury of building your app and directly accessing uh, these files. Directly accessing these files in, in this way allows you to take advantage of the visual analysis that we're, we're releasing the use of the GPU that I discussed in the last question. These next set of questions have been asked by many of you. They're in regards to our JavaScript API at both the 3x and the 4x versions. Here's the first question. Will new features continue to be added to the 3x version of your JavaScript API and how long do you plan on supporting this version? We're actively working on implementing new capabilities into the 3x version of our JavaScript API. Some examples of this are support for vector tiles, as well as uh, redesigning uh, the pop-ups. So by these actions alone, we are committed to supporting the 3x API for quite some time. As version 4x becomes more mature and functionally equivalent with 3x, what you're going to find is you're going to see us put less and less new capabilities into the 3x version. However, rest assured that 3x is going to be supported for many years to come. And even after that support ends, we'll continue to host the API. As a matter of fact, apps written on our 1x version of the JavaScript API still function because we still host the API to allow those apps to to, to use it and take advantage of that capability. And here's another question with respect to our JavaScript API. I have an app that I built with the 3x version of the ArcGIS API for JavaScript, and I want to take advantage of some of the features in 4.0. What is the best process to migrate to 4.0? We have implemented some significant changes in the API for 4.0, and these changes are so significant that the best and the cleanest route forward when using 4.0 and migrating apps from 3 to 4 is to completely rewrite your application. Now, luckily, we have some very extensive migration docs that will guide you through this process. As a matter of fact, we've already released some of those docs currently with the beta release of the 4.0 API. Now, you may be asking yourselves, do I have to migrate my apps to 4.0? And the answer is no. You can keep your apps on the 3x API if your apps are currently performing well and you have no new capability that you want to implement. Feel free to keep them on the 3x API. However, I do recommend that you start to look into the process of migrating your apps. If it's not today, perhaps sometime in the future. It's definitely a good exercise. Another question that has been asked uh, by many of you is, I plan to build a new app using the ArcGIS API for JavaScript. Should I use the 3x version or should I use 4.0? This is actually a really good question. And um, it's different from the previous question because 
the person or people in this scenario are actually building an app from scratch. So they're not migrating an existing app that's using 3X technology to 4.0, but they want to build a brand new app and they don't know whether they should start with it on 3X or 4.0. So there's two main um, things that you need to look at. One is uh, capabilities and the other is timing. With respect to capabilities, um, you do need to take a list of the requirements that your app is going to have and see whether those requirements are even available, for example, in 4.0. If they're not, then your decision is, is fairly straightforward. You, you would use the 3X technology. Conversely, you may find that there are uh, capabilities only available in 4.0 and not 3X, so you should make your decision appropriately, uh, certainly based on capabilities. And the other is timing. Perhaps there's a piece of capability that's in 3X, but not in 4.0 yet. However, you need to go to, to your, uh, you need to get to production with your application in a more timely manner than when that capability is going to be released in production. James asks, what developer tooling can I use to build an app that runs on multiple platforms? James, this is a really popular question. There's a lot of folks out there who want to build an app once and have it run on multiple devices. This will save time and money and also allow you to get your app to production much quicker. We've got a lot of technology that you can uh, take a look at in order to accomplish this. The first is our JavaScript API where you can build web applications that are uh, typically always connected. However, they run on desktops, laptops, mobile devices, and you can implement your app such that it has a responsive design such that the user interface and the user experience changes and, it is, and is optimized for the form factor that your user currently has. Next is our Java SDK, where you can build apps that target, build an app once that is, and target both Windows as well as Linux. When we release Quartz, you'll be able to also target Mac. Our Qt QML technology allows you to develop your app either in C++ or QML, which is a scripting language, and allow you to deploy that app on all of the popular platforms. In addition, if you choose to use App Studio either as an experienced developer or perhaps as a non-developer, you can build these apps without writing any code, but also with App Studio, we have some developer productivity tools that we give to you. For example, you'll have a player, which allows you to very quickly and easily deploy apps within your enterprise. Lastly, we have a Xamarin SDK that we're working on. We haven't released it yet, but it's going to be coming out soon, and it's going to allow uh, you.NET developers to develop in an environment that you're comfortable with, and again, develop your applications once and deploy it to many platforms. Thanks for all your great questions. It's exciting to see all of the impressive apps and tools you're building with our developer APIs. To learn more, you can register for one of our developer summits either in Palm Springs or Europe and join some of your closest friends who will have unprecedented access to the development teams at Esri. You can also visit our developer site at developers.arcgis.com, follow us on YouTube, or join the conversation on GeoNet. Thank you. Mm -hmm.